when that line is crossed. You never know who's in the shadows. Is this just about population reduction? What is this about? Why are they doing this? Why this insane Doctor Strange Love plan for just unleashing all of this stuff on the world? Why do it? Now, as our conversation went on, I started to, to, to find answers to those questions. Now, some of this is speculation. I want to share this speculation with you because it's important enough that we work together here to figure out what's going on. And there are some clues, there are some very important clues that I'm going to present to you here in this video. He said, absolutely, it's about population reduction. So I said, well, in this meeting, did they mention any figures? And he said, yes, they did, 50%. Half the world's population, this is planned as per the Georgia Guidestones. For those of you who don't know what the Georgia Guidestones are, it's a stone monument in Georgia, in America, that was erected anonymously a number of years ago. It's in eight languages, and it's like an Illuminati manifesto for a new world, as it were. And just hold that thought about this being a manifesto for a new world. This is an important concept here in what I'm presenting. One of the key parts of this manifesto for this new world is that there should be a population of 500 million people. Now, 500 million people is an enormous reduction from the nearly 7 billion that we've got at the moment. That's, that's pretty much 95% of people who, who would no longer be on this planet. And 50% is, is a step towards that. And there's a reason why they're doing all of this. There's a reason why they're in a hurry. There's a reason for this insanity. And when he was explaining this, then he said that they have a name for this plan. This project has got a name. And, and I said, well, what is this name? He said it is called the Anglo-Saxon Mission. The Anglo-Saxon Mission. Now, I'd heard that before. It was something historical, I think, to do with the Crusades quite a long time ago. But I hadn't heard it in the present day context, and neither had he. And later on, as he continued to tell his story, I began to understand what I thought this might be about. Hence the title of this video, and the reason why I want to share this information with you, because we need to work together to figure out what's going on here. It's extremely important to understand. There's a plan, I believe, that Hitler would be proud of, which is so evil, it's so Machiavellian, it's so hard to face up to, it's so unbelievable, that I need to put it on the table for you so that you can consider whether or not this might be a possibility. The plans that I've been describing are definitely a possibility because he heard them with his own ears in this meeting. Everything I've described up until now, up to and including the a major outbreak, a major outbreak of hostilities after the limited war. So the sequence is as follows. The plan sequence is as follows. Israel attacks Iran, then there's a ceasefire, then uh, during which time there is heavy governmental military controls over populations in all Western countries. Then China is attacked by a biological weapon. It's a flu-like disease, it spreads like wildfire. This goes all over the world, and then they have a major third world war. And then, by this time, 50% of the population will be destroyed. And not only because of the war or the plague, but because as many of you watching this will understand, the infrastructure goes down in situations like this. Um, there's no food in the supermarkets, there's no gas in the pumps, there's, there's, um, the telecommunication goes down, there may not even be water coming out of the taps. Um, people are, are kind of thrown back into, into a Victorian era without the facilities to handle this, because most people don't have their vegetable gardens, they don't have their horse and cart, they're not able to survive in the way that we used to be able to. We're very, very vulnerable in our technological advancement, we're extremely vulnerable. 
And of course the controllers know this. At this stage, our source was speculating about why are they in a hurry? Why do they want to do this? And there's a sort of heavy irony here, which is like, uh, I was saying, well, if you're going to plan the Third World War, then why not take your time over it and get it right and, and do a really good job? You can, you know, this could be in 20 years' time or 30 years' time, it doesn't really matter. Why is there in such a rush? And our source said that he felt, from inside information he's continued to receive, that this is still timed for something around 18 months from now. And that puts it around about the middle of 2011. He doesn't know this for sure because these events aren't calendar driven. They're, they're actually event sequence driven. In other words, this has got to happen before that happens, and then after that the next thing can happen, and then after that the next thing can happen. So a whole lot of things have got to be in place before all the dominoes fall over, so to speak. And they seem to be behind schedule in some of this. There are some planned events that definitely haven't happened. One of the things which I remembered when I was hearing this story was that our source, Henry Deacon, and many of you who've watched uh, Project Camelot videos and read their reports for the last uh, three years will know that when we met Henry Deacon in 2006, he said that in his own inside information, was that there would be a war against China in 2008. And that didn't happen. And all this time, at that time it didn't make any sense, and even now it didn't make any sense. It's like, well, all right, but why do this? Why do this? Why do this? Now, this was his answer. And our source is a pretty smart guy. He's been in the military. It's a totally different story that he didn't debrief in our audio transcript, which you have the opportunity to read, but he's had his own ET experiences in the military. He's got his own sources of information about some of the background for this. He says that he's as sure as he can be that the, that the people who are calling the shots in the world, you can call them the Illuminati, the Controllers, the Cabal, whatever name you have for them, they believe that there is going to be what he called a geophysical event, a major geophysical event. He says that the best information that he's got is that the insiders believe that this is going to happen, or they are concerned that this is going to happen. And many of you watching this will know that this isn't a completely crazy idea. There have been trillions of dollars that have been spent on deep underground bases for some reason, which we don't know why it is. You'll know about the seed bank in Svalbard, this is in the public domain, where all the seeds of all the plants and all the crops in the world have been buried deep inside a granite vault in northern Norway. There are many precautions being taken as if something might happen that could really threaten some of these valuable resources, including the seed banks of the world. Now, if there is going to be a geophysical event, as they believe, this is because it seems to be preserved Illuminati inside knowledge, whether it's true or not, that there are repeated cyclical geophysical events about every 11,500 years. Information about what really happened to Atlantis was very probably in the Great Library of Alexandria that burnt down a couple of thousand years ago. There are persistent rumours that much of that information has been retrieved and it's in the Vatican Library. This is, this is information which is which not, not in the public domain, domain and, and which, which insiders, insiders may have, have access, access to, whether, whether it's accurate, accurate or not. not. The important, the important thing is to realise realize that they, they probably believe, believe that this is going to happen, and they're, they're making their precautions. And this might be the justification for this insanity that we've just heard about in this plan. Consider this. He said, if there's going to be a major geophysical event, something like a pulse shift, maybe it's Planet X, maybe it's some kind of 
energetic phenomenon that the solar system is going to be uh, moving into that's going to somehow destabilize the, the Earth or the Earth's crust in some way, we don't know. But if there were to be a major emergency like that, something that would actually make a war look like look very inconsequential, the thing that will help the human race to survive it, or will help parts of the human race to survive it, is if there is already emergency preparedness in place before it happens. In other words, if you knew that there was an emergency coming, if you knew, for instance, that there's a hurricane coming in to hit your city, then you put all the emergency preparedness in place beforehand. You have the troops ready, you have the infrastructure ready, you have the military ready, you have everything that you need ready to handle this situation so you can respond and react and recover in the best possible way. Our source suggests that the reason for this, 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 this whole Third World War scenario is that then the Western governments, with the Chinese out of the way, will be in a state of such totalitarian control of their own population that they will be best equipped to recover and rebuild the new world after a cataclysm. And he thinks that this is what's happening. And I have to tell you that this, that this terrible logic makes sense to me that they would think that way. I'm not for a moment agreeing that this will happen. I think this is wild, crazy stuff, but if they believe that it's going to happen, then this could be their justification for this kind of, this kind of plan that we've heard about is really being discussed. And this now is my own speculation right now, which also makes sense to me, and I invite your comments and your thoughts about this. We need to work together to figure out what's happening here. It's called the Anglo-Saxon mission. What that told me was that the reason for the name is because this is a white racist agenda for the inheriting of the new earth. It's a plan that Hitler would be proud of. If they think that a new earth needs to be rebuilt, a new world, Think of that little phrase there. If a new world needs to be rebuilt after a cataclysm, they want the Anglo-Saxons to be doing it. They don't want the Chinese to be doing it. They get the Chinese out of the way first, and then the Anglo-Saxons will inherit this new world with the, the other nations, the Asian nations, the African nations, the South American nations. Presumably, it is assumed that they won't have the resources to be able to handle the situation in, in any kind of a way that gives them the strength to recover after whatever it is that they think is going to occur. So there are several other parts of this which, which also fit. And one of the reasons why this is an important presentation to make personally is my own personal thoughts, because up until now, I've been following a lot of the the, the well-founded research on these sorts of agendas. We've had our own sources of information over the last three years. But I've always had questions in my mind, like, why would they do this? You know, war against China, why? Third World War, why? Um, and suddenly, a lot of these things start to make a little bit more sense. It's possible, for example, that when we heard from from Jordan Maxwell in our interview with him, which we did at the end of last year, 2009. He described to us how he had researched a number of repeating symbols and images that had been used ever since the time of Hitler, and even long before that, about the dawn of a new day. There's something very important in Masonic and Illuminati thinking about the dawn of a new day. And here we have possibly the reason for their belief that if you think about the possibility of a cataclysm, if they think this is really going to happen, the 2012 movie that many of you will have seen, after all of the flood and all of the earthquakes and tsunamis, then you've got these big ships sailing across a calm sea with the sun streaming through the clouds, 
and you've got the dawn of a new day, and the implication in that movie is that now those people will be able to rebuild the new earth because those are the survivors. It's